This week's three letters of joy is a Euro 5 DAF LF. Seriously, can these just get shipped to Africa already? With transmission warning on the dash and inability to select gears, we can crack the daily out and see what errors are in the AS Tronic Lite ECU. With the pump short to ground, pump pressure control unlikely, it's fair to say it's fucked. So seeing as we've comms to the ECU, we can do some limited checks from here and with the three power supplies reading correct at the ECU, we can say the wiring is good. If you didn't already know, you have an inline fuse on the gearbox on Euro 5, but not on Euro 6. It's bad enough I'm trying to do this outside on the flat. It's a scaffolding wagon, so I've got really limited access. With me leaning over the cross member and wedged against the prop shaft, I'm blindly trying to get this power pack off for repair. With the union having none of it, I've gone with a brake pipe spanner and maximum effort, but with me managing to round the pipe off, even with this, I've seen my ass and decided the gearbox is coming out to do this. With the truck going up in the air, the prop shaft can come off and we can start stripping it all down. After snapping both bolts on the exhaust clamps, that job stacking shelves in Tesco was really calling, but I decided to persevere with trying to undo things and not just cut them off. After the gearbox realising it was fucking me off, we made friends, undid the bell housing bolts and within the hour the gearbox was out. I could then strip this power pack off the gearbox, get it on the workbench, see what we were dealing with and what the customer wants to do with it. With the ECU stripped from the body and the pump removed, we can open the body up and access the motor and assess the condition. Now you might think dealers don't repair components anymore, but that's quite far from the truth. This motor is as expensive as a recon power pack, so what would you do? With the decision put to the customer, a new power pack was decided to be replaced. Anyone who has done this job will know how much fun it is juggling these and trying to get the bolts in. So a dab of silicon sealant keeps these in place while I fit the new power pack. I'm also fitting new pipes to this due to how hard they were to undo. With the bolts nipped in with my gun, I can tighten them up by hand to the correct torque of FT. With things going too well it was time for Euro 5 to fuck me over yet again and as this pipe didn't seem to line up I decided to help it along and bend it in. But this also caused me to fuck the threads, meaning I couldn't start the union in the alloy housing. Well done Russell.
So I needed a tap to chase the threads and I still had an old pipe, so time for some fabrication. With some grooves cut in the union with my grinder and a bit of lube, I could run this in by hand and salvage the job. Ah, a palm ratchet, the fidget spinner for adult technicians. I never had one of them, mainly as I have a fucking life and I'm an adult, but hey, these things are brilliant if you're stuck in a tight place or just want to use a socket without a long ratchet. Anyone who owns one of them knows the advantages. I've added a link for some in the description if anyone is interested in getting some to chuck in their toolbox. It's all about making your life easier. With this fitting now wanting to thread in square and right, we can fill up the power pack with about one and a half litres of this 70W75. I'll only add one litre here, as by the time I bleed the clutch booster, shifter and pressurise the system, it'll need a touch more. With that all done, it's time to slip it back in. The input shaft was greased slightly and the bearing checked before refitment. I certainly wouldn't have taken this out and not checked it for serviceability for the customer. Funny isn't it? They can make an air operated press and yet I'm doing my best line dancing cowboy impression pumping this transmission jack up with my leg. I've leveled this gearbox pretty well on the jack so it swiftly went home. I could then set about getting the essentials fitted. With the ECU now plugged in, we could communicate with the Aestronic Light ECU and set about programming the software and calibration procedures with Davy 4. After pressurising the gearbox, bleeding the clutch actuator, bleeding the gear shifter, it had completed all the sequences it needed to operate. Once the wheel freeze were removed from the vehicle, we could jump in the cab and validate the repair. With 
with the gearbox now selecting forward and reverse gears, we could rip it up the road and check the gear shifting operations and the clutch operations. With these all working correctly, we could then return the vehicle back to the customer. As usual, please drop a comment below if you've enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one.